So I'm going to fillet the fish today, because for today's recipe, we want fillets of fish that have, uh, and with their skin removed. So the technique here is, is for round fish is the same from one as from, from most of the other. And you're using your flexible filleting knife like that. Okay, now we've got a fillet of fish on top here and a fillet of fish on the bottom. In between, all the way up along the center of the fish, is that backbone that we looked at um, earlier on. Okay, the backbone, which is running up through the middle. Um, and then there are these little pin bones which protrude out. What's very important in any technique is that you start in the right place. A sequence of logical steps is lost if you don't start in the right place. We always start off behind the fin. So that's a fin there, okay? These guys in here are gills. We go behind that fin there, knife held up, held up sort of fairly high, well in control situation, and cut up towards the head. Remember that when we are boning or jointing a piece of chicken or we are carving or we're filleting a fish, your knife is always touching a bone. Always. And what it should be. Um, if it isn't, you're more likely to do some wrong. So I cut in there, in behind that fin there, and up towards the head. In other words, through the soft flesh. Anything above that is just hard sort of bone and head of the fish, okay? So the mistake you might make there is just to go straight across in which case you'd lose a triangle of flesh, you know, from a lovey, from the sort of the shoulder of the fish. When you've done that and you know you're in the right place, then what I like to do then is put, put your knife in like that. And you want to be at the near side of the backbone. So the bone is underneath my knife. How do I know that? I put my knife in and I feel it and I hear it like that, okay? Then when you know you're in the right place, cut from top to bottom, making one just, again, at the near side of the backbone. So, so far we've really made sort of two significant cuts. One behind that fin there, up towards the head, and the second one is th this one where I started here, but really it's that long one. And, and then those two cuts overlap here at the top. So here and here. So now, it's getting to a stage where I can think about this unfurling. So this is all about a logical process. So one, two, and next thing then, as I start to gently fillet the fish off the bone, it's going to unfurl away from me and end up being a fillet of fish. So now, knife held up quite high again like that. Slide your knife along the frame of the fish, so along the bones. Now this is very gentle sliding of the knife. Okay, and we're going to keep going until we meet an obstruction. And what you'll note here is on the tailpiece of the fish, I have met no obstruction. So I'm going straight across there like that. Up here, I'm going nice and gently. Okay, and the fish is just unfolding, or sort of unfurling in front of me. I'm cutting over the bones rather than through them. And you see now what's happened. You see the way up here that these bones, the pin bones, have presented themselves to me. Because the pin bones never go any further down than halfway. That's why there's no pin bones here. Does that make sense? So instead of just cutting straight through the pin bones, I might I slid my knife over them so they're still in the flesh. So now you put your knife under the pin bones and you wiggle and they stay behind, attached to the frame of the fish. So that's them there in that little raft there. Then, make sure I didn't miss any, no, back in with your knife. Just gentle little strokes, you could, I mean if you, you'd hardly even cut yourself, I'm using so little pressure if you, if, if you know, if your knife hit your hand at this stage. Keep going, and now I'm sliding my knife just down over the frame of the fish. Now we're out to the edge of the fillet, so I can cut that off nice and carefully, like that. And there we go. And then this should have virtually no bones. There might be one tiny bone there. No, there isn't. Okay. So, does this make sense now about the frame? This, that's the cartoon, okay? But this is the bit these pin bones, the dark ones. That I, as I drew them in there, are the ones that can cause you trouble, okay? 
Now, what a lot of fishmongers will do, and it's fine, is they'll put their knife in and they'll go whoosh like that, and the pin bones are in, and then they'll use a pliers or a tweezers to just take them out. Okay. Um, okay, that's that ready. And then you just look at the fillet of fish, see something you don't like the look of. I don't like the look of this dark skin here, which would do me no harm whatsoever. It's just slightly discolored looking. It would do you no harm. But generally speaking, you would remove that to get a better looking finish. Any little bit of bruising, that might have been where the blood had just rested for a few moments, you take that off. And that's my fish, my fillet then ready um, for grilling or pan frying or whatever, or for the next stage in my case, which is skinning. But I won't do the skinning just yet because I'll do the other side of the fish. So, process and sequence. The first cut behind the fin. That's the fin. They're the gills. You don't want those guys, okay. So cut behind the fin and up towards the head, like that. And then cut all the way through. So it's loosened. Yeah, see there, if it wasn't loosened there at that point, that would cause you problems later on. So make sure it's completely loosened, like that, okay. Then I know that's a good clean cut. Then I'm putting my knife in at the near side of the back bone. So stop, have a look in, make sure the bones are under your knife. I know they are. Then I can, I can make this the second cut, if you like. One cut, the second cut, all the way from head to tail or tail to head at the near side of the backbone. And make sure that these two cuts overlap. So this is loose as well, in the same way as it's loose down here. Then, hand held up nice and high, just very small little strokes of the knife. So, and all the time touching the bone. So the bone kind of guides you along. So here, going with the tail, you see the way it just sort of unwraps? There are no um, uh, pin bones to get in my way. You can see where they end. So I'm able to actually sort of completely fill it, the tail piece, by just sliding the knife across. I could even at this stage, if I want to, even though I didn't do it the last time, push my knife through like that and keep my knife down against the bone. I could have done that. And that's open there. And then it makes this business of just sliding your knife on the bones. You're not cutting through the bones. You never cut through a bone when you're doing it this way. And gradually, it's the matter of the fish unfurling. Okay. So sliding over those bones, and they present themselves here. And then the last time we came in from the other side, but this time we're going to slightly different angle. So you put your knife underneath the bones. You can see the knife sliding up underneath and just sort of wiggle. They stay behind, attached to the central frame. Like that. Go back, make sure you haven't missed any, which I did. It's in there, okay, great. And then, again, small little, gentle little strokes of the knife down over the rib cage, right out to the edge of the fillet. And you'll know then when you're ready to cut the fillet off the fish, like that. Discarding or removing any bits of flesh that you don't like the look of, like the, the skin there that lines the stomach. Again, it would not do you the slightest bit of harm, but certainly you would not expect to see that in a restaurant situation. Um, it just would not be a good presentation. Fish bones then, we keep some for stock. We'll talk about more length another day about fish stock. Okay, and that is my filleted piece of fish. In our instance today, we want the fish skinned. So flesh, skin. So put, to skin the fish, put it skin side down on your board and cut through the flesh like that. And I've just, I've just kind of hinged it there. And then start pushing away. And then within sort of three or four centimeters, you'll have enough at that you can grip the skin like that. A little bit of pressure pushing, pulling towards me. A little bit of pressure with the knife pushing away from me. And remove the skin. Skin, of course, in other days, is delicious, but only if it's going to be crispy. In this case, we're making a creamy sauce, so it won't be crispy. It'll be soggy, and it won't be good. So keep going. Take your time, like that, all the way up, just barely removing the skin. Okay. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can deep fry that. It'd be quite a good uh, fun. I'd be keeping that for another day. I wouldn't serve it deep fried with this gratin, but if it was super fresh, I'd put it in the freezer maybe, or put it on as a small plate tonight. 
you know, cut the strips of it, just straight into the deep fat fryer and serve with a little tartar sauce or sauce gravish or something. Lovely. Getting an extra, whatever, 15 quid out of your, out of the fish skin. Okay, now, and that's our filleted fish. Okay, our skinned fish. So let's skin the other side again. So let's remove the skin, cut through the flesh, onto the skin. So I haven't cut all the way through, but it just allows me to get a grip. And once you're in about three or four centimeters, then it becomes easy. Keep going like that. If that happens, uh, which I did on purpose, of course, uh, you can, I'm very needy, aren't I, to say that, sorry. Uh, uh, so you can start again, gently getting in there, gripping that skin, and starting again. Yeah, there we go, and off you go again, like that lovely jubbly, I'll do that. Uh, if that happens then, and you're really getting over it. Uh, you could start at the opposite end of the fillet and go sort of gently like that. Okay, and keep on going like that, and that'll do nicely. And if that skin breaks again, you can always go into the center of the fillet, cut down onto the skin, turn your knife horizontally, slide it along the skin, and it comes off nice and cleanly. Like that. Okay, good. Um, and that's that. Now, the first few times you fill it, fish is quite terrifying. Um, but don't be terrified, please. Um, because um, it's all about practice. It is the craft part of cooking. Um, for it to go right, for you, it will, event, it will ultimately, it, it will sort of have to go wrong maybe once or twice. Not seriously. You know, you'll be able to make it all look lovely in the end.